So question one, let's have a look at this. State one disadvantage of using a quota sample compared to simple random sampling. Well, the simple answer is that it's not random. What happens in a quota sample is that an interviewer is given a quota to fill. So you end up getting quite often an interviewer bias for a quota sample. So as long as you've got this idea that it's not necessarily random, okay? Somebody is asking people, so they select them. Let's have a look at the next part. So any so eight percent of students or members of the university dance club. Well, that sounds exciting. Right, a random sample of 36 students is taken from the university. Let random variable X represent the number of these students who are members of the dance club. Use a suitable model. Right, what's the suitable model? Right, well, it's gonna be binomial, okay? Why? Because the probability remains the same, all the students are independent of each other, and there's a fixed number of trials, okay? That's what you're looking for. How do we write this down? We write, remember, we just write it like this, and it's 36 and 8% is 4p, okay? Now the question, right, question that we need to look at is what's the probability that x is equal to 4? Well, I'm just going to use my calculator for that. That's all we're going to do. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second, okay? Now this one down here, we're going to do the same thing um, but when you use this on your calculator, your calculator um, easily works out the cumulative binomials. Um, you can work out selective ones, that's simple, but you can work them out up to a point. So the easiest thing to do when you do, do this on a calculator in a minute is that we're going to do 1 minus the probability that x is... So if it's more than or equal to 7, I want to take away like 6 or less. So we're going to work that out on our calculator and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Um, so we'll do that in a moment. Right, the next part of the question is, is, like, is, is the same thing, we're just feeding this information through here. All right. But let me just show you this bit here first of all. So let's have a look at, at BI, this one just here. Okay, so don't be scared of your calculator. It's relatively simple to go and use, okay? We've just gone through menu there. And then we want number seven. So I can use the arrows or I can just go and press number seven. That's binomial PD. So that just means it works out the probability of, of, uh, of it equal to a particular number. I'll pick number two here. You can mess about with list if you want to. Um, and then X is going to be the outcome that we're looking for. So we want to see if it's equal to 4. And I'm just going to press equals. And then 36 is the number of trials. And then we put in the probability of each particular outcome of success, which is 0 0.08. There we go. And just press equals. There we go. How easy is that? And then just write down that answer next to... Um, our uh, probability that x is equal to 4, okay? Now, what about part 2? Okay, so I need to work out the probability that x is less than or equal to 6. So, it's the same thing really, okay? We're going to go through number 7. But this time, what you don't quite realise is that there's another screen here. So if I just go, this one here is the one I want. I want binomial cd, right? So that's cumulative probability. And it's just as easy. Go for number 1, let's go number 2. We said you go list if you want to. Let's get my information before. So I want to change that first number to a six. Um, everything else is the same. There you go. Press equals. And there we've got our answer. So remember, it will be one minus this number just here. Okay. There you go. And parts C and D is pretty much the same. But I'll have a look at those now. So there we go. We've got naught point. 167, we've got this other number just here, so I don't need to do anything to that, that's correct. So 1 minus this figure, and we get 0 0.0222, decimal places that you want to, doesn't really matter too much. 
Right, let's have a look at part C. So it says only 40% of the university dance club members can dance the tango. Ah, right, okay. Right, find the probability that a student is a member of the university dance club and can dance the tango. Well, the chances of them being a member of the dance club. And we're going to multiply that by 0.4 because that's the chance of them being able to dance the tango. There we are. Now, it says a random sample of 50 students is taken from the university. Right, find the probability that fewer than three of these members can do this here. All right, so all we need to do is we're effectively, we're just going to set up a new binomial. All right, we're just going to like pass this forward. All right, and it's 50, probability. Now, if you happen to have this wrong, you can still get the marks if you've then passed that number into there. All right. Now, all we got to do is, what's it say? It says that fewer than three. So I need to work out the probability that y is less than three. Now, it's cumulative and it will include the value. So actually, you need to do it like this. Now, you do it exactly what you just did a second ago using your calculator, but you'll need to feed in the 50, new probability, and this figure here, make sure you put in the two, right? not the three, because it's not including the three, because it says fewer. And if you do that, you'll get that number there. Okay, right. Hopefully that was useful. See if you can enjoy the outro. If you enjoyed that video, please like and subscribe or leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching. I've been RMS Maths and I'll see you next time. Maths out.